Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of the Spring Flowering Trees. Uh, this five part, obviously, episodes, five episodes, uh, will obviously cover the first three. We'll go into the Southern Magnolia, the Magnolia Grandiflora that we started in part one. Um, so in the second part, we're going to continue now by making the five magnolia leaves. And this process is of what I call lamination, where just like laminating dough, the croissants and things, you're taking two pieces of paste and laminating them with a wire between them. So this is an alternative you can use for quite a lot of different uh, larger leaves and larger petals. And as I explained in uh, the first part in part one, if you were doing say tulip tree magnolias, which often are like a plummy pink color on the outside and white on the inside, this is the technique you would use. So let's get started. So for making the leaves, we're going to use our uh, template. All right, so we just like we did on the petals, going to trace this or obviously print this on cardstock and just cut around this. An alternative you can also use is you can print this onto cardstock or even usually easier on cardstock, though cut it around and then put that onto say a piece of plastic and then draw around that to make your pattern. Just having a durable pattern like this means that you can use them um, obviously many different times, you know, and you've always got them, they're gonna be nice and durable. Um, so anyway, so that's going to be the first step. So you're going to cut out your pattern and then we need to take five 22 gauge wires. Now this will be the same for sugar and for air drying clay. And we're going to do very similar to the way we did the petals in that we're going to then take three of the wires and we're going to measure 60 millimeters on those. All right. So we're going to take your ruler and then you will take these. So this wants to be like six centimeters or 60 millimeters. So you're just going to mark a mark at the zero there. So, so we'll have six of these. Now, you know, you obviously the black you can see on the green, but you could also, of course, use white wire if it would be easier to see. Okay. And then you have two, which are going to be uh, 45 millimeters. All right. So that's going to be four and a half centimeters. So those would be for our smaller, our smaller uh, leaves. So we have those ready. Now we're going to be using um, on the leaf. This is obviously like the real magnolia leaves, okay? And you can see that the magnolia leaf has a very basic veining, which we're actually just gonna do similar to the way we did the water lily leaf. But you can see that this is actually like a, you know, not necessarily the largest type of leaf you can get, but obviously you can see the scale of the obviously life-size magnolia is huge, okay? Um, but anyway, so we're going to, so we have your patterns. And what we're gonna do is um, we're going to prepare the paste. Now, in your uh, directions for the paste, for the leaves, um, for the sugar leaves, we need 65 grams of moss green flower modeling paste, um, or as I said, you could use the sugar in paste, um, gum paste, and then 65 grams of pale brown. So you're just gonna have a chocolate brown and on your, um, obviously you'll have an example of the color. So just like a sort of a mid sort of chocolate brown, okay? Um, and then for air drying clay, what we need is on our um, recipe here, we're using our measuring formula. So we want four moss, four times moss green formula using a measuring mold, all right? So basically what you do is using your measuring mold, you just make this uh, moss green here, okay? So you're gonna do four times of that. So that would be four number ones, four number two yellows, uh, four number five blues, and four number seven magenta, okay? So you're just following this. Remember this is on, you also have on a download as well on the website. Um, and then on alternatively, you can also use 14 grams of white. Now remember the number one, this one here, um, on the video I did for this uh, measuring mold, this weighs 3.5 grams, okay? So basically if you've got four number ones, if you have a high precision scale, like I showed you in the first part, you could measure off 14 grams of white, and then you would then add, and this is in your download, plus uh, four number two yellow, four number five blue, and four number seven magenta, okay? And uh, that will give you uh, this color here, which is going to be this um, moss green formula, okay? And then once you've made that, you're going to roll that into a sausage, just like we did for the petals, and you cut it into five. So each of these will be for, uh, for, the, uh, for obviously a leaf, okay? And then you will do the same with the brown. Now for the brown, we're going to use a number five, number six ombre. So we're gonna use here the brown and we're gonna use the number six. So you have this color chart. So that's about the sort of color brown, just like a mid brown color. All right, so what you do there is you need five of those. So that would mean you'd measure off five, 
um, five number, um, obviously ones, or alternatively, you can also measure 17.5 grams because that would be five, three, five times 3.5. And then you would then do five number, um, obviously six browns, okay? Um, and that is gonna make this color here. So you see, it's just like a light, like sort of chocolate color, okay? Which is quite pale uh, because we're gonna be dusting a darker chocolate on there to get that velvety look. So you have those made and you cut, as I said, each of the sausages into five. And it would be the same with your flour paste, your gum paste. You would, of course, just uh, go ahead and uh, once you've done that, you would take your pieces there and uh, cut them into five. And that would give you the, obviously, the 65 grams that would give you what you need. Now, so that's going to be the first step. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take the brown clay and roll into a sausage and cut in cut into five, place back in bag, repeat with green. I'm gonna then take a brown section, roll into a 50 millimeter, two inch long sausage, place in the plastic folder, roll a little wider than the leaf, okay? So I'm gonna start off, um, I'll start off here with the, the small leaf to show you. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you do them. So you're gonna take one of the pieces. So this is actually much more than we need for the small leaves, but it just is easier just to divide this into five. So we're gonna make this into about a 50 millimeter, all right, about a, a two inch sausage like this. So a little bit of how we did the petals in the first part. I'm gonna place this into here, I'm just gonna flatten this down. And then taking my, just gonna roll this out. This wants to be just a little bit wider than the obviously width of the leaf, okay? So now we're going to go through the, um, so we're gonna take that and then we're going to then go through roll out through the pasta machine number one, number two, number three, number four. And then for the course for sugar, you just roll it out a little bit wider and put it through your pasta machine, okay? So I'm gonna show you this step again because obviously this is just a slow progression. Because air drying clay, you know, just like sugar, you don't want to go straight through on number four because it's just gonna get lots of wrinkles in it. So remember, put your paste towards the bottom of your folder here. And then we're gonna go through the uh, pasta machine. So remember, we have our pasta machine set on number four speed, all right, I have it on number one. And then when we feed this through, I'm gonna go through it. I'm just gonna pull the folder down. That just helps to make it, because it's a softer paste, it's not as dense as gum paste. So you're just gonna go number two, then number three, and then number four. Switch this off so you see we've rolled our paste out ready for the next part. So we're gonna remove this and place this in our stay fresh flap. Now I'm actually gonna put it on the green part of the flap because it makes it a little bit easier with the lamination process. All right, so just gonna take this out. I'm just gonna just gently peel this off. Okay, and again, you remember you can put just a little bit of, you know, because this depends a little bit on your age of your clay because when the clay is fresh, you're just gonna place the clay, place this into the flap here like this, all right? And um, then you're going to just close the flap up. So now we're gonna repeat the process with the green. So we're gonna take one of our green pieces. You see by portioning this out, you then have the right amount for each time, okay? So again, just roll that into about a five centimeter. Remember, this is the uh, moss green formula for the air drying clay. So this would be a comparable color to the uh, using for like say the wrench or pre-colored flour and modeling paste, gum paste. But uh, the sugar in one is a little bit more yellowy, but it will still work fine. So you can use the sugar in straight from the container as well, or you could add a little bit of a leaf green to that. Okay, so, so we're gonna take your pieces here, and then this is gonna go through the pasta machine in the same way. So I'm just going to do that. I'll be right back and show you the next step. So now we have the green uh, paste, right? So what we're now gonna do, we just keep this in the, the uh, vinyl folder. We're now gonna take the brown part here, and then we're going to, just gonna keep this in the flap, all right? And I'm just gonna cut the bottom of this. So I'm just gonna cut the bottom of this square. So again, remember, don't use like a cutting wheel or as I said, a knife, it's not gonna damage this, okay? Then what we're gonna do is gonna take your wire. So this is the, Showing the shorter one first. So this is the four and a half, 45 millimeter, four and a half centimeter one. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my glue here. I'm just gonna brush from that line all over the wire. So just gonna brush that 
both sides of the wire. Put that into your wet wipe, your wet one. All right, so we're gonna lift this up. So now what we do is you place the wire. So the wire goes so the, the black um, dot is there, like that. Okay, you're just gonna press that down. Just make sure the glue's over the surface of that. And then we're gonna take the green. The green is gonna be a little bit more than the, than the brown just because of the way the measuring mold. And you're just gonna make that level with the, the bottom there, like so. Now, if this was a sugar one, what you would do is like we do two-tone calyxes, before, once you get the wire in there with your glue, you then take a little bit of vegetable shortening and you would rub all over the brown. And what will happen is the vegetable fat, the shortening, will laminate the two pieces together. For the air drying clay one, I just gently fold that over the top like that. And I put the flap and you're just going to just going to just I'm just sort of rubbing over just to make sure that that sticks together. OK, then we're going to take your flap here. I'm going to take my pattern. Again, you can just put a little touch of corn flour, corn starch on there, especially if you remember if you're using a cardboard pattern. Remember, I said this is going to be more than we need for the small and the medium. And then we're going to take your for the larger one. So it's going, to, it's going to go around your leaf here. I'm going to take your excess paste off. I'll explain about the leftover paste. I'm just going to put that leftover paste, just put that into a separate bag. Just like we did on the pedal, you're going to just use this technique of just budding up against the, and this could be done, of course, on the leaf, it's a little bit larger, but you can totally use your here. All right, so it's going to give you a leaf shape. And then reading through your directions, so, um, so then we're going to um, laminate the paste using template, place on top, cut around using cutting wheel, replace flap and smooth around the edge to thin a little. So what we do is you put the flap on. I'll just remove one of these pieces of plastic so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on there. I'm just going to thin the edge just a little bit, all right? So just, just going to go around the edge just a little bit, not, not too, too thin. Just going to just go around your edge. And that's pretty much going to be all the way around there, like so, okay? Um, then we're going to carefully remove from the Stay Fresh folder, mold at the base of the leaf and place on a soft side of pad or fun firm. So it's going to just take this, it's just going to carefully, you know, just gently peel that off. All right, so you see you've got the brown part on the back. This is going to laminate your two colors. And then we're just going to just, going to just mold this around the base, like so. All right, and then we're going to place this onto either the back of like a flower modeling pad or a piece of fun foam, all right? So either of these will work. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use my, uh, my size guide. Again, I'm just gonna take a little bit of vegetable fat or as I said, just like a little bit of like cold cream, Nivea cream. And we're going to, uh, then we're gonna place them on there using size guide mark central line using needle tool end of companion tool. So you're just gonna go down the middle of the leaf here. So we're just gonna put in the lateral vein, which is your central vein, just gently. All right, so we have the central vein here. And a little bit like how we did the ward lily. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to just gonna work, because the veins are very, very simple. So you see how you have this sort of like a curve, all right? So it actually wants to follow a curve shape. But as I said, they don't wanna to be too symmetrical, meaning that you can do like a couple together like so and then you will do the same and then when you do the other side you sort of go like in between do you see how i'm just walk, sort of working following this curve because it's pretty basic uh, veining on the on the leaf all right so then we're going to take the veining tool again this is really just for the air drying clay put a little bit of your as i said your cream onto there so now what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of follow. So you see, I've got the veining tool on its side here. So you're just going to work into 
just like we did when we made the lotus leaf and the ward lily. And then we're going to do the same onto here. So you're just going to just work. So it's going to give you this just a little bit deeper vein in. All right, and then you're just going to, from where the wire goes, so really it's going to be about sort of half, halfway up there, you're just going to come down the center like that. We don't soften the leaf or anything else. So then we're going to, uh, once we've done that, so uh, not making too symmetrical, and then go over the lines with veining tool like the water lily, and from the wire to the end of the central vein. Follow the base of the shaft to the companion tool, and then pinch like a taco shell. So what we now do, right, we're just gonna just carefully take this off. And this is easier, because this is especially when we do the larger leaf, which would be a lot, it's not, you can't really hold this in your hand. So what I found works best is if you bring it off the edge of the table, all right, we're gonna take the, the ball end of the, so you can have that away from the leaf. Just gonna place that, and then I'm just gonna just pinch the stem so you see, you pinch the base of the stem around your companion tool. All right, and then we're going to pinch this like a taco shell. So you think of like Mexican food, we have like a taco. So you're just gonna just pinch this like a taco shell like this, okay? So you see how you're gonna get this sort of V-shape like a said Mexican taco. If you do need to do the trim up, you can do. And then just, you can also just like, for example, so on the leaves, you'll often have one that's going to have a little curl or well, like a furled edge like on roses. So you can do that, you know, like on the right hand side or the left hand side, sort of anywhere on the leaf, but don't make them all the same because you want it to look sort of natural. Okay, you can see like this one here. So what it means is when we have the leaf at the side there, you're going to see a little bit of the brown from the underneath. Okay, so actually that one I've done that way. So this one I would just do on the other side here. But just going to curl that just around slightly. And then we're going to put this into a former. Now this is, a, as I said, we've used this before. This is like a nice tube tray used for um, obviously uh, water tube, for uh, ice tubes to go in water bottles. Um, and so that's how, how the leaf would sit into there. So it dries in that slight taco shape. Now, alternatively, you can make that out of foil, okay? So what we do is you take three fingers, you put two fingers underneath and one finger on top. And then what I actually do there is you're just going to almost like just sort of crimp that. So you see how I've got my fingers like this. All right. So what this will do, this will give you, you put two fingers underneath, one finger on top. And you almost are going to make that shape here like this. And on there, you're just going to just bend it. So when you put the leaf to dry in here, see, it will have the same sort of effect. So the top will just come over like that. All right. So as I said, so that's, that's and then another alternative way you can do that. If you have like, for example, like a sort of a medium flower rolling pin, you can also use this as well. So prior to the, like the multi-former, the ice tube tray, uh, this is the technique that I generally would use in class uh, prior to that. So again, so you need five cavities. So you do like five like this. So something that you'd have at home, everybody would have at home if you don't have one of these, would be like a wooden spoon handle, you know, something that's just a little bit bigger um, than a regular stick, all right? Or you could also use like a jumbo marker. If you think about like that, you see this is just like a large Sharpie marker. You could use that and go over the top of that. All right, so there's many, many things you could use there. So then what you do is you turn this over and then again, you see how I'm just gonna fold the top of this over like this and like this. And then again, so what would happen is when this goes into there, the top of it will go over the top, all right? And that's how you would, uh, how you would make the, uh, the leaf. So I'm going to just get my paste ready, all right? I'm going to show you that again. I'm gonna just get my paste ready. And when I come back, I'll just show you how to laminate it and just do that vein in the things again, just so you can see that a second time. So just to show you the large leaf, same process. Now just remember, because of the allocation of paste, you know, when you roll your um, sausage or paste in your flat before you go through the pasta machine, make sure it's just a little bit, tiny bit wider, all right, just a little bit wider. It's gonna squash out a little bit, but if you make it too wide here, it's not gonna be long enough here, okay? Um, so that's quite important. So anyway, so you do your brown, and then of course I've got the brown uh, here in my flap, so I'm going to just cut off the bottom part. Remember, you can use your cutting wheel. Here. 
Remember, this was a sugar one. You can take your vegetable, shorten it, and you rub the fat, rub all over the surface, and then put your egg white wire on there, or obviously the other way around. But anyway, so you'd have the, and that will stick the paste together. So here I'm going to take my paintbrush, just going to brush the, remember, just keep this covered while you're doing that. So we're going to now just going to brush over the, all over this. Because the, the air drying clay sticks to itself, so the two pieces we're laminating. But like, so this technique, um, if you were using this for like magnolia petals, all right, what you could do there, so you could have a strip of like, say, the pinky plum color, um, then you would have obviously your white, all right. And usually if you're doing something thinner like a petal, I would go to a number five thickness and another number five thickness of the opposite color. You'd have a strip here. And then what you do is you could lay your wires to, you could do like, say for example, six wires, and then you could take your pattern or your cutter, and that means you do all of them at the same time. Whereas the leaf, we have to do these individual. So what we're gonna do here is gonna just take the, so see to the dot there, like so. Then we're gonna take your, green paste out of the also the reason why we have um, four batches of green and five batches of brown because the green to make this moss green out of the air drying clay uses a number two ball of yellow that's quite a large addition to it so you, you'll obviously that's why we have a different quantity uh, in sugar obviously it would be 65 grams of each but it's just that because when you add the yellow it's going to make it obviously a larger amount again just make sure that's not sticky i'm going to place this on the top here like so and of course, if you were making a larger leaf in this process, you know, like if you were making like a larger, because some of the like tropical leaves like Heliconia and certain other leaves and uh, that um, house plants and things like that, some of have bigger leaves, you'd use exactly the same technique. Of course, you're just using uh, more paste. Okay, so it's so a good, uh, good technique to learn because as I said it's very useful for many different um, things that we do. But for those of you who have issues sometimes getting the wire in, this technique could be used with the same, you know, two pieces of the same color as well. I'm just going to pull this paste off. Okay, you're going to put this into your acid bag there. So then we're going to now thin around the edge. Again, just showing you it's a little bit easy to see. We're just going to just thin around the edge just slightly. Remember, don't even don't need to make it too thin. We're just going to thin around your edge slightly here and here. And then we're going to take this out. Just going to carefully bring this off of the here. I'm going to mold this around the bottom just to secure that. And then we're going to place this onto your, onto here. And then with my, remember a little bit of, uh, like I said, it's cold cream, moisturizer cream, Nivea cream, or vegetable fat as well, vegetable shortening. So it's going to make a line down the middle, not too much pressure. Okay, and then we're just gonna just gonna sort of just you want these lines to curve. So just gonna go. Remember, don't make it too symmetrical. So it's almost a little bit like a fish fish bone, like a spine. You see how I'm just sort of using the. Companion tool here. So for example, when we did the ward lily and lotus leaf, just like this, they both have pretty simple leaves, uh, shapes on there, okay? So it's just sort of like, I mean, within our uh, Flower Pro veiners and things, we don't really have anything that large. So this is also teaching you a lot of different, um, you know, like skills. So when you're doing certain leaves, Especially, as I said, some of the tropical leaves and house plants and 
things like that have these big type of leaves that you could use this technique for. So remember we're actually using the, so we're using the sort of this a little bit on its side. As I said, the vegetable fat on here or the Nivea cold cream will stop this sort of sticking, okay? So it's gonna be, it's gonna gently pick this up. And then remember, I'm gonna bring this off the edge of the pad now if you were working on fun foam, so if you didn't have a pad like this, you're working on a fun foam, you could just use like a, you know, cake dummy or something and work on the top of that as well. And then you're gonna take this, so you're gonna bring this off the edge, okay? And then you're gonna hold your stick like this in the middle. And then you're just gonna literally just hold that and you're just gonna bring your paste around here like so. So you're gonna get this hollow part. And then we're going to then just sort of, literally just gonna, sorry, I forgot to do the, part here as well and then from where the wire is and I said if you want to do that with your where the wire is do that with your veining tool as well just to slightly emphasize that and then literally you're just going to pinch that to create a slight taco shape like this all right okay and that's sort of how you make your leaf you see how you have your two-tone leaf and then of course you can use your um so as I said, you can just sort of take a little bit of the leaf like that and just sort of fold it over. I like this look because it just sort of looks nice and natural. And then you're gonna put it into your former or your foil former. So this, this dries like that. So you sort of actually wanna put it in so you get a slight, slight V shape, all right? Now remember, of course, the air drying clay is gonna shrink a little tiny bit. So if you look at that one there, you can see that's the one I've just made, the small. I think this is the one I made, actually, this was made yesterday. So it's gonna shrink a little tiny bit, but it's uh, not, not too much, okay? I'm just gonna pop this in for this to dry. Now, if you have, um, when you do your leaves, all right, like sometimes what will happen is you might, you see like where the, uh, you've got like a little bit here on the, where the end of the wire is, or you get like a little hole there where the wire might pop through. What you would do there is let this dry, and you take just a little tiny bit of your brown, so you're just gonna take just like a little tiny bit of your brown paste from your combined paste, like this, okay? And you see then you, so this is where, of course, like the air drying clay is a little uh, easier than the sugar one. And uh, you can use a little tiny bit of glue, but normally because this sticks to itself, you usually can just use this. So what you can do is just take a little tiny bit of like, almost like a little patch. You can just put that in like there. You see, and you can use your like companion tool. So we can't really do this with sugar. Um, and then you can just take just like a little bit of moisture on your finger and you can just go over the top of that. And what that was gonna, is gonna act like a filler, you see? But you do this once it's dry. But that's just like, you know, sometimes when we have wires, they poke through a little bit on the back. You could also do that on the petals as well if you needed to, all right? Um, but as I said, that technique of lamination of the leaves is really super um, fun to learn because also, as I said, you can see, try, you can imagine trying to hold that leaf and get that wire like a, about halfway up the leaf would be quite difficult to do, all right? Whereas laminating the two pieces together um, gives you really beautiful results. Now, when you've finished um, with all of your paste, all right, once you finish, so just if you do have to do any patching, just leave a little tiny bit of brown, but then you see all of you will have obviously another four pieces like this, but it looks a bit like camouflage, okay? So obviously if you were ever doing camouflage technique, that's sort of like how you would to roll this out, but it sort of makes a very interesting pattern. But all you do is once you finish with that, and this will be the same with sugar, all you do is literally just mix this back together. Now the brown, because it's a very light brown, isn't really gonna change the color too much. So then you're back, then you'll have basically fresh moss green for another project, all right? Um, so when we make the dogwood, um, if you're going to make uh, the dogwood in air drying clay as well, you'll be able to use this and recycle this to then make your dogwood leaf and dogwood centers, all right? For sugar, the same, okay? So that's sort of, but you see it hasn't really changed the color that much, just that in a little tiny bit of pale brown. So as you can see here, when you've mixed all of your leftover paste, remember we started off with air, this is air drying clay, 14 grams basically of green and approximately the same of brown. So then you combine that together and as you can see, we have 19.7 grams. 
So um, obviously we have actually only used about eight grams, but as you can imagine, if you try to use a smaller amount, it's difficult. But this is going to be what we're gonna use for our dogwood project. And the nice thing about using the new measuring mold, it means that your paste is gonna stay consistent. So what you have left over, but you can see the little bit of brown in there isn't really gonna change the color of this, okay? Um, so then we will totally be able to recycle this if you're going to make your dogwood in sugar in uh, air drying clay as well. Um, so coming up, I'm going to show you how we make the stamens for the center of the flower. Now we're going to finish off the flower center. So first we're gonna use a very similar technique to the stamens on the ward lily. Um, so remember this technique is very useful for flowers like passion flowers and especially flowers that have a lot of stamens. So I'm using here quarter width white floral tape. All right, and so what we're gonna do is you're just gonna twist some of the floral tape so remember, now if you should break it accidentally, because if you put too much pressure on it, it's gonna break. Don't worry about it, because you can just use a couple of pieces. But you see how you're just gonna twist, just like we do pine needles, but generally the pine needles we use um, half width green tape. So of course, when you're doing like, uh, for example, the um, Japanese magnolia, you're gonna just make a little small cone freehand for the center and snip it. And then you can make these stamens. And of course you could, you can dust these yellow as well. These are actually like a white, whitey cream color. All right, so we're gonna use our, um, so we're going to then go around the end of your flexi scraper 20 times, okay? So remember when we do this, gonna just take your floral tape. So I'm just gonna just hold that there. So I'm just gonna start there. So gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight. And then you can just, of course, if you've got a little bit here, So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So just gonna, just gonna twist your tape. Remember you wanna sort of put, twist it and pull it at the same time. So you need tension on this. This is something of course you could sit and do while you watch say TV and then you could just keep it in a bag whenever you, you need it. But remember, as I said, don't worry if you have to do this in you know two or three or even more pieces. So we've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. So it's gonna just so you see like that little bit there, we could keep that because you know when you're doing stamens and things, you could use this. So here, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this off like this. And then all we're gonna do, you know, this is obviously the folded ends here and here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut this down the middle. All right, so just do that by eye. All right, so we're gonna cut that down the middle. Okay. And then using your tweezers, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take little groups of, you know, four or six. So you see, I'm just pulling them away like this. Two, four, six, eight. So you see how you've got the, the folded part is here. So you're just gonna literally, as I said, I hold this, just gonna pull this away. So you're just gonna take where the folded end is and see how you're gonna make these into little groups, okay? I'm gonna do the same with the, because the floral tape is a little sticky, so you're just almost taking like two or three, two, three or four, the time and that was just sort of hold them together so you can do like two all right, but this is, so using the flex, I mean, obviously I've calculated that the, so using the flexi scraper, everything is gonna be exactly the right length we need it to be. So now what we're gonna do is gonna take some half width floral tape. All right, so the half width floral tape is gonna go at the bottom here, just gonna go around a couple of times. And then what you're gonna do here, you're gonna just take these and you're just going to attach them so that the folded part is just, just as you can see, just in here. It's coming in a little bit tighter there, so you can sort of see that. So literally the folded part, and you can just use your, like a piece of string, okay? 
and then you're just going to come around here. So you're just going to put these little groups, all right, around the bottom like this. So use your floral tape like a piece of string initially. Just a single one. There we go. But just where your folded part is here. You see, so you're putting these little groups around. And then what we do is we use our tweezers to be able to remove your floral tape breaks, just go around with that. So this is going to give us the stamens. But you just want to just, with the very, very folded part, it's just going to be right at the bottom. So just a little tiny bit there, right at that base. Just going to continue. Now, when you, if you're doing this in sugar, just be a little bit careful of your spurs, meaning these little tiny spiky parts here, because of course they're going to be more fragile than they will be in air drying clay. But the reason why I've shown you to do this in air drying clay is, you know, I like to show different projects, but also um, for, especially, you know, if you're wanting to use this on a cake, it's a huge advantage of using the air drying clay from a weight perspective. You know, plus this is also quite, it would be an expensive flour for a customer as well because of the labor involved in it. Um, so using air drying clay means they have a sort of keepsake they can use afterwards. Okay, so we're just gonna take your, so here, and it's gonna go around. So you see, I'm just going around the bottom there like so. Okay, and then once we've done that, uh, we're going to then, um, and then uh, gonna curl inwards using the tweezers. So just make sure that you, you know, they're secure on there. And then using my tweezers, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my tweezers. Now don't tug too hard, all right, but you're gonna just take your tweezers here. You see what I'm doing here is I'm taking the tweezers and I'm just curling them in. And then we're just gonna just gonna come around here, just sort of fluff those out. And it's gonna bring this up here like so. So you sort of see how that makes your stamens in the center. But so the you know the floral tape works really, really well. Remember on the ward lily and as I said on the you know this project using that for for stamens. Okay, so that's going to be uh, ready for coloring. So, but before we do that, we're going to add four more 20 gauge wires, or in the case of the um, sugar one, four more 18 gauge wires. So these are the half length, because remember in your checklist, it called for five 20 gauge half length wires, green or white, and then for sugar, five 18 gauge wires. Now here, what we're going to do is we're just going to put those wires so we're using this not because it needs any strength, because this only weighs a couple of grams, but we're doing it to make the stem look thicker. Now here for the flower, we're just going to literally just tape down like this. Um, we will be, um, because we're going to be adding the petals, and then we're going to add some extra uh, layers of brown floral tape to create like almost like a sort of natural branch, just like we do when we do, um, when we do uh, the cherry blossoms and things like that because both the dogwood and the southern magnolia we're doing to sort of emulate a sort of natural looking stem. Okay, so this is gonna be your, um, your center. So next step, I'm going to show you how we color this. All right, and then we're gonna be moving on to tape and color the petals. And then we're gonna finish off by adding the wires to the bud. And that will be the finish of the second part. So now we're going to move on to dust the center. So this is the flower center, which I've already partly done. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use a cappuccino color. So this is almost like a dark creamy color, but a little bit to the, you know, the cream we made the paste from is more yellow. It's a little bit more brown. We use this on the autumn project. So what you're going to do here, you're just going to just gently brush sort of all over. Now, when you're doing a sugar one, just be obviously a little careful of your spikes, but we're just going to get that sort of, uh, you know, creamy, creamy color onto the top of that. It just gives you a good foundation. 
Then we're going to take some prairie green. All right, so we're going to use some prairie green. You need for the next three colors quite just small little round brushes. Okay, and then what we're going to do here is where each of the snips are, you're just going to put just like a little bit of green, just sort of go in there. So you're going to get like where the actual snip is, you're just going to go in on the top of the snip here. Just going to get this sort of greeny color here. So I've already got some of those done. Just a little bit of green on the top there. So to get just like a little bit of greeny color uh, onto there. And then we're going to take some daffodil yellow. So we're going to take a little bit of daffodil yellow. And then what we're actually going to do here, remember, make sure there's not too much loaded on the brush. You're going to put the daffodil like onto each of the, like the little spurs. And again, this is where like the air drying clay, because the air drying clay stays flexible, you know, the advantage of that is, is that you're less likely to break it. But if you do a sugar one and it breaks a couple of things, don't worry too much about it. Just going to touch a little bit of yellow on the top there. So you're just going to have the top of those, as I said, the tip of those with the daffodil yellow. So the best way to do that is looking on the top of it. And uh, that's good. Now, of course, the other consideration here is you could also, when you have fragile components like this, you could actually make this in air drying clay and then you could do the petals in uh, sugar if you wanted to, you know, so when we make sort of certain elements of a flower where they're more fragile and could get broken easily, because you can see that in sugar, these would be quite brittle, whereas like the air drying clay, you know, they sort of, um, this one was made yesterday, but it's still flexible, you see. And then we're going to take some autumn gold. So again, these are colors that we've used in other projects before. So the autumn gold color here. And then you're just going to just brush that just on the very, very tip. So, all you, so really what you've got is you've got the yellow and then you're going to have this autumn gold color uh, onto here. So, so just going just to take your brush here, but you want very, very little color, very little color on there. Just going just gonna to get your, your sort of color onto there because they just have this sort of, uh, as I said, this yellowy color on the, the tips there. Don't worry too much about down where the stamens are because the stamens are going to form like a sort of a crown around here. And then you're going to take some green and then with your prairie green, we're going to brush the prairie green just around the base of the stamens up to really where the base of the because the petals will sit here, but it's the top of the stamens are actually there, just sort of white in color. Now there are some varieties, not the Grandiflora, but there are some large sort of hybrids of the uh, Grandiflora style magnolia that have like sort of pinky color, like a reddy color here. So they do vary a little bit uh, with, with color, but you're just gonna have that, uh, those colors. All right, and then once you've got those colors completed, so then we will then take a little bit of hairspray here. All right, so just with a little bit of hairspray, I'm just going to brush this. And of course, you can do this outside as well. So we're just going to put a little bit of hairspray just on the top there just to set the color. So this is just unscented hairspray. Now in sugar, this would be, this would be done with uh, using obviously a steamer. So you're just going to steam it with your sugar. All right, so that's going to set the, the color there. And then the, um, Next project I'm going to show you is going to be the uh, petals. So the petals are going to be, those will be taped. All right. So what we're going to do here is on the, you remember you've got nine petals. So you're just going to start your floral tape here. Just go around. I'm just going to slide this up and we're going to come down about uh, three to four centimeters, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. All right. It's just going to come down about a third of the way down the wire. I'm going to go around. Just going to slide this up going to come down here like so. Now when we do the coloring on the petals, we're going to use a very, very pale daffodil yellow. This is like when we did the gardenia project. So this is the color I used a little tiny bit of that I put into a container, put in corn flour or corn starch and shake it. So you just want a really, really pale, pale yellow. Okay. It's the softest yellow. And uh, so what we will do there is going to take some of this color but I use this um, on the magnolia petals. I use this for gardenias and flowers like that. Now, all we're going to do is using quite a large round brush. We're just going to just sort of put a little bit of that color. It almost will not really look like there's anything there, but it will just have this sort of slightly yellowy center to it. 
I'm just going to do the same. So this is going to go really like in the middle part on the front and the back, all right? But it's going to just, so you don't, it wants to be very, very subtle. Now, in a situation like this, where you are not sure about how, how intense that needs to be, best thing to do is just like, for example, try a little bit like on the back of a pedal or like on the very, very base of a pedal like that and just sort of see how, because if you made it too strong, it just needs, it means it needs more of the uh, corn flour or corn starch in it. But as I said, you're using a large brush and just going to just sort of brush into the middle. Now, because air drying clay is quite bouncy, um, you're just going to use your finger there underneath that here, like so. All right, so you do that on all of the the nine um, petals, okay, which would be the three small and three large. And then we take pale chocolate, which again is chocolate with uh, corn flour, corn starch in it. All right, so again, just the color we use quite a lot here. I'm just going to use, I'm using here a small flat brush. All right, so what we're going to do here is on the pedal, we're just going to sort of brush around the base. So we're just going to brush around the base. So you're brushing from the source away from the source like this. So you're going to brush all the way around the bottom of the pedal and then really extinguish most of your color. And then you're just going to bring this color up, the brown up just a little bit down the middle here. All right, so you see how you're just coming up just a little bit. So it's quite subtle. And then again, just going to come up. So it almost with the brown and the yellow will sort of blend. So you're going to get that just sort of very soft color, okay? And then you're going to put your, but you see, like for example, here in the United States, like if you go into say a craft store where they sell all the silk flowers, you'll see magnolias in burgundy and pink in all different colors. Because a lot of people use um, magnolias for home decor, like in silk flowers. And of course, as I said, it's very, very popular for weddings, um, especially here in the southern United States. A lot of brides use magnolias, not really to carry in their bouquet because they're way too big. But um, for example, for decoration of a church, or they would use them for, um, I said, table arrangements and uh, use those. But you're just going to have, so you see, it's just a very light brown coming up here. Now, another thing I would suggest, you know, we talked a little bit about that before, is just make an extra pedal, all right? So you just make an extra pedal. I mean, you don't have to vein it or put a wire in it, but just cut it out because then you can practice your color on here. Um, because, you know, remember this looks different. Um, obviously, because it is a very, very pale ivory color, it's gonna look a little bit different. Now, um, what I've done here is um, I have already done these petals, all right? But you generally are gonna put these into like a styrofoam block like this. And then because, you know, you've obviously got to use quite a bit of it, I would just then go outside and then I would just lightly spray this with unscented hairspray, all right? And so uh, I'm gonna just gonna spray the other two. So generally I just do that outside or as I said, into a big box or something. Um, and uh, so then, uh, as I said, these will be ready for assembly. So now we're going to assemble the magnolia. So this will be ready for, um, obviously, for the third part where we're obviously going to color the leaves and uh, finish off coloring the buds and then put everything together into a spray. So we have our scent. And again, remember with air drying clay, obviously, there's no problem to lay it down. Be careful with sugar. So you want to do that. So you're going to lay out your petals. Now, because we've used, um, obviously, here, a fairly soft wire here, you can use a pair of pliers or a pair of tweezers and just sort of hold these at the bottom and just bend them away just slightly. All right, so first of all, we're going to take your, you see these are going to sit, so as you can see here, they'll sit at the bottom of that slightly lumpy part where we've added the stain, where we've added the, um, obviously, stamens, the flower floral tape stamens. So we're just gonna go around one, and then we're going to go the second one and third one. So remember magnolia, the southern magnolia here has nine petals. So it has the three inside petals here. All right, so see how it's going to sit there like so. And then you're just going to move these around. All right, so they're going to sort of sit up like, like that. And then we're going to take then, so I'm going to use a pair of pliers here now. So again, just gonna just take the bottom of the pedal, just gonna bend that slightly. Now the next three are gonna sit in between. So they're gonna go here. All right, so it's gonna go one. It's gonna be our second one. So you want to just try and get those all together. 
here. So this is going to be our second. Just remember, as I said, just move. Now, so again, with sugar, you want to obviously just make sure you hold at the bottom and bend that out a little bit. And then this will be the third one. But you see how they're all wanting to come together like this. Just going to open this out. Of course, you might have a bride that wants a, um, you know, burgundy colored one. So, of course, you can make that in pink color and just like we would. And these outer petals are going to sort of, they're going to just sort of sit a little bit more the right angle. And remember, it's like a little bit like a bowl shape, all right? So, the shape of the magnolia. But those just go in the same position as the first ones. But a little bit like other flowers we've done, you can decide on how closed or how open you want this to be once you get it um, all together. So then this one will come out here like so. And then our final one is going to go here. All right, I'm just going to go, and then what I'm going to do here with my floral tape, this will be the same way we use on the center. We're going to go basically eight times. So we're going to come down, going to come up, remember this could just be laid down. So we're going to come down, we're going to come up. Come down. Up. And just down here. Okay. So seven or eight times. So just, so what you're doing here is you're making this natural, um, the natural stem here of the magnolia. All right. So just make sure that you get those. These are your inside ones, and then these will be your outside ones here. All right, and this is going to give you your bloom. Now, as you can see, this is still a large flower, all right, but this is really a perfect size for, as I said, a wedding cake, or like if you're putting this on, say, a grapevine wreath. Uh, because you can see here, this is actually um, just over six inches, all right, so it's about, uh, you know, 15 centimeters. So if you think of like a six inch cake board. Now, you can also for example, you could make one that is more closed up as well. So you could take, you know, if you wanted to, if you were making a second one, for example, you could have one more closed up and then one more open. But because we're just going to use one of these, we're going to have these ones uh, obviously open. And uh, so here you have your uh, uh, beautiful magnolia, right? Now this is going to be ready. So when we, of course, accent this with its lovely green glossy leaves is a really beautiful uh, color but you see how you can see the sort of the very very pale yellow is very subtle all right the color in there but really sort of beautiful um as i said and uh obviously these these uh but once we get everything finally put together uh in the next episode we can obviously move these now just especially if you're working in sugar just put this somewhere safe remember it is quite heavy in sugar so you just need to take that in consideration um because of course, a lot of the weight here actually comes from the wire in the air drying clay here. Um, but if you put this uh, onto a scale here, you know, this is, uh, the, so just probably put it on that way, there we go. So this is about 17 grams, all right? So about three quarters of an ounce. Whereas like in sugar, this would be obviously uh, closer to uh, probably about 80 to 90 grams. Okay, so, so this is where, as I said, using a big flower like this, because now the trend with example, with uh, semi-naked cakes and things like that, um, there's not a lot of substance to hold it. So if you took this in sugar and that weighs, you know, close to sort of four ounces, 100 grams, you know, it's quite a heavy flower, just like a, um, something like a sunflower. Um, so this will be your uh, Southern Magnolia, the Magnolia Grandiflora. All right, so that's going to be, and what we will do is uh, in the next part, when we do the leaves and the bud, we're going to be, we'll put a little bit of greeny color on here as well. And we'll also dust some brown onto here. So this will be finished off. You can, all right, just like, uh, for example, when I showed the uh, lotus, 
uh, the, remember that the, the flower doesn't have a calyx because when the bud opens, this is basically the bud, when this splits open, then the thing is the two halves of like almost like a pea pod just detach and that obviously flower comes from there. So there's no calyx. But also what you can do, and especially in air drying clay, is you can take some of your uh, leftover ivory color, all right? And you can put like a little bit of air drying clay in there and with a wet finger, you can obviously actually blend that down. So you really don't vis visibly see any wires there, but usually because of the way it's presented, you won't sort of see the stems anyway. Um, but the thing is with that is you have to know exactly what angle you want. The advantage of having these components like this is we can of course then just uh, decide on how closed or open you want the project to be. Um, so that is going to be the, uh, as I said, magnolia ready for part three, when we're going to assemble this with the leaves. So then final thing we're going to do for this second part is we're just going to use, again, four extra. Remember in sugar, this would be on an 18 gauge wire. We add four extra 18 gauge wires um, in air drying clay, which I'm working in. We have one 20 gauge and another 420. Now, remember when we add wires, you know, a lot of times when we do things like roses and flowers like that, we add, um, obviously add two extra wires, meaning we have a total of three because what that means is that the three wires will give you a triangle. Here, we're adding four wires. So with the one in the middle, that's gonna give you a total of five. And again, what we're gonna do is gonna just gonna come down here. Now you only need to do this about halfway down, all right? Because this is going to be uh, put in with some other wires. So two, it's gonna come up and three. And we will be doing some texturing on this as well in the next part for we're just making this nice and five just make sure your tape comes uh, all the way up to the top there we just got another six Seven. This is all done with half wit tape. So you can just go around a couple of extra times there and then eight. Because when we do in the third part, when we're doing the coloring on the leaves, we're going to use the same color, like the apple green and some brown onto here. And we'll actually dust all over this and it will give you that sort of velvety look that you get for the bud that I showed you in the first part. All right, so so that's so in air drying clay. I mean, this can just lay down, but you can you can put this into um, obviously into a, a block of styrofoam, so this will stand up. So in this lesson, we have um, obviously put the uh, made the leaves. We've made the stamens. All right, for the center, we have uh, colored the petals and colored the stamens, and then put the flower together. And then we also have got the um, we've also got the bud made. And uh, that will be ready. So in the third part, we will uh, start off by uh, coloring the leaves once those are dry. Uh, because if you're working with sugar, of course, they take a little longer to dry than the air drying clay um, and get those glazed. And then we're going to then be uh, dusting the bud and also add a little bit of extra color to the flower. And then we're going to move on to the final assembly. So I hope you've enjoyed this second part of the Magnolia grandiflora, the Southern Magnolia as part of our spring uh, flowering trees. And I look forward to seeing you in part three where we're gonna finish off this beautiful creation uh, to go with our dogwoods to finally have a beautiful spring flowering tree spray. See you soon, bye.